jump and go by everything. Okay, this is closer. Like that, yeah? This is a bit much. All right, cool. Um, I've got to address a few points. Unfortunately, lately there's been a, a lot of claims made in uh, online and uh, those claims have to be addressed. The claims, the reason it has to be addressed is, you see, unfortunately we've got a lot of people who are claiming that, who are basically claiming that, oh, you can't, okay, it, it, it looks like people, well apparently people are saying that um, you can't criticize Islam. That's not the case. With some people, it may come across as like that, but that's not the case with me. You can criticize Islam as much as you want. I'm not insecure about Islam at all. What I don't like is that, uh, what I don't like are blatant lies to be per perpetuated. The reason I don't like blatant lies to be perpetuated, especially in this current climate that we're in, is simply because it has consequences on, 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 on regular, regular human beings, uh, regular Muslims. Namely, the majority that it tends to have a, a consequence on tend to be women. And obviously none of us would like people to be harmed. The reason I'm saying that people are going to get harmed is because obviously if people are perpetuating really, really ugly narratives and really, really uh, mentally, mentally, uh, basically ideas that make absolutely no sense. If, if people perpetuate that about a group of people, what you're going to have is another group of people who are then going to feel, feel as though you can almost persecute that group of people. We know in history that every group of people that have been persecuted, before they got persecuted or before they got, you know, harmed in any way, they were ridiculed. And they were also, you know, they were called, you know, backwards and people with beliefs against other people, etc., etc. So it's highly problematic. So it has to be addressed. Now, to cut the long story short, um, unfortunately, there's been a couple of channels on online that have become pretty much, they have become Islamophobic. Now, they would not say that, uh, they wouldn't say that they are Islamophobic. However, if you're perpetuating everything negative under the sun, literally everything negative that you can think of, and then you associate that with a group of people, and it's all based on a lie, all based on a lie, then by definition, that is Islamophobic. What are those lies, you would say? Those lies are, we will start with one, slavery. Two, apparently there's an inheritance error in the Quran. Three, misogyny in the Quran. All these claims have been made against the Quran and I'm here to deal with those claims. Now, now, number one, this idea of slavery. The Quran does not talk or refer to any such thing as slavery. However, there is, unfortunately, there is a particular translation which have got people confused. That translation is namely, uh, quote unquote, right hand possess. When we look in the Arabic, ma malakat a manukum, and we will look at the linguistic dictionary definition of those two terms, not, it does not mean right hand possess. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah. just, um, just to fill in the blank there, yeah. uh, are you referring to uh, Surah 4, verse 25? For example, I think Surah 4, uh, verse 24 talks about Malakat a Manukum. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to, I just wanted to go for it. Maybe localize it, so or pin it down, so that we can refer. Let's do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, what I'm dealing with is the word Malakat a Manukum. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I no, no. Yeah. To interrupt yeah, yeah. You. no, no. Give, give a bit more. Um, okay. Cool. Your okay. To cut, to cut the long story short. Malakat in the Quran, as we already know, comes from the root word Meem, Lam, Kaf, Malak. 
it is uh, translated, the definitions you are given is owner, possessor, king, sovereign, along those lines. So possession is not a problem with Malakat. The issue that we have is a manukum. A manukum has been translated as right hand. First and foremost, the word hand, yad, is nowhere to be found. Secondly, a manukum comes from the root word iman, and it does not come from the root word, uh, the other root word, yameen. It does not come from the root word yameen, which means right. And to prove that, all we have to do is look in the Quran itself. Namely, we can look at verse, we can look at chapter 2, verse 93. And we can look at a manukum in that verse. Same word, a manukum. You can. 93? Uh, yes. Chapter 2, verse 93. Imanukum. Imanukum. Now if you go up, look at the English translated as Believe. Did you if you are believe if you are believers? I don't know if there's, there might be a variation in another um, translation. I just want to confirm the the chap the surah four. I think I think it is twenty five um, where that where that word appears. Okay. Uh, chapter two. Uh, chapter two. I'll just read the translation I've got for... One minute, let me just yeah, deal sure. with this Imana part. Sure, sure. Yeah, look, with it, your faith, Imana uh. Your faith. And we look at, when we go to Imana we look at the root word it comes from, yeah. Amen. To believe, trust, be secure, be in safety, confine in it, security, place, security, covenant, etc. Those, those are the definitions of Iman. Right. And so when you expand it to Imanukum, is it? Imanukum. Uh -huh. You see that? So, and if you go to verse, um, chapter 4, 24 that we're talking about, okay. same word, Imanukum. Now, the only difference here is the vowels. Right. Now, as we already know, in the Quran, originally, there are no vowels. Yeah. Vowels no, uh, were added. No diacritical Yes, marking. no diacritical marks. Yeah. So vowels came later. Yeah. So with that being said, the Arabic of Imanukum and Imanukum would be identical. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Right. So it doesn't make sense that one is translated as your faith and the other one is translated as right. Or, or, or in this case, right hand. But you can have a word which is the, in which the consonants are the same but the vowels are different mm -hmm. to mean different things. So how do you how do you conclude that it's one meaning and not the other because from your approach? Because Arabic doesn't employ vowels. If you look at any Arabic, there is no diacritical marks. Right. So what I'm saying is, and the, fir the first, the first in the in chapter two, mm -hmm. um, you say that the word is is imanakum, mm -hmm. and in chapter four, mm -hmm. you're saying that it's the same word and not the not. A it's not a different word. It's the same word. Okay. Literally, if you look at it, look at it. it Look at the uh, 424 and I'll go to 423. Uh, uh, I don't know why I think it's, I think it's 25. But, um, you can go to 5. It might, be, it might be in both. You can go to 5. Yeah, it might be in both. That's not a problem. But you can look at it. Identical. Alif, ya, mim, alif, noon, cat, mim. Yeah. Um, look at 25. Here. Yeah. Malak Look. Look at it yourself. Yeah. You be your own judge. So even in the so in the translation uh -huh. it's different. Is the translation is different? Right. But in Arabic it's the same. Okay. So logically that doesn't follow. So can can two words be written the same with the same vowels and have different meanings? No. In in Arabic there's a reason they don't employ vowels because vowels don't really have that much importance in Arabic. In normal Arabic, they literally don't employ it. Right. You can look at any Arabic right now on Google right now. 
There is no diacritical marks. So what's so what's the purpose of the diacritical marks? It only, it's only in the Quran. That's a good question. I don't know why they put it in the Quran if it doesn't exist in any other Arabic. Okay, but there are words with the same, let's call them consonants, uh -huh. uh, which may employ, so two words which may employ the same consonants but different vowels. No, there is no vowels. In Arabic, so there is, is no vowels. What I mean is the vowel sounds. Okay, vowel sounds. Like a ah instead of e, eh, for yeah, example. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you know what those are unless you have the diacritical marks? Oh. What I'm trying to say is, say for example, what I'm trying to say is they don't have that effect in the Quran. So for example, I could say, Aymanakum, I could say, Imanakum, I could say, Ayyaminakum. It will, it will not change because in the Arabic, what they always depend on mm. is they depend on... Let me give you, let me give you an example of, no, a, of a word. Forget about it, not in the context of the Quran necessarily. Okay. So the word um, for Messiah, mm -hmm. Masih, uh -huh. and the word for... Um, deformed, mm -hmm. which is uh, masih. That would be. A d thank you. You just, you just, put, you just exactly what I was wanting to tell you. Okay. What they, what what Arabic relies on is something called the root word. So, for okay. example, the, there's a difference of a root word of what you just brought. Mm. Masih with a ha and masih with a kha. Okay. So there would be two different root words. So, for example, now. I don't know uh, the, mm. the the difference between. Um, the H sound and the H yeah, sound. Yeah. I don't know if that if the the the, the dot which yeah. makes them different is, is that considered a diacritical mark? No, that is literally ha and kha. So okay, it's okay. it's not nothing to do with diacritical. Okay. It's okay. different letters okay. literally. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like ha is jin, ha and kha. They are those three. They look the same. Yeah. But one of them has a dot in the middle. The other has on a top, top on the top. Yeah. And you one get doesn't it. have one. And one doesn't have one. Yeah. So. So in, in Arabic and in Hebrew, they rely on root words. Right. They don't really care much about vowels. Right. So what I'm trying to say is this particular root word is limited to those synonyms. That's another thing that the root words employ. Right. They employ synonyms. So the moment someone, uh, some, the moment someone translates or puts in a word that doesn't go with those synonyms, it doesn't belong in there. So that's what the system is about. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying to you? I get you. So that's, that's one angle. So one angle is... Uh, so I apologize because we digressed uh, a little no, bit no, from, the, from your, no, from your starting fine. point of what, no, you the, the issues out. that you wanted to no, discuss. No, you helped me out. I, I needed that because I don't want to look like I'm, I'm propagating my own stuff. So I want, I want to be challenged. Sure. Um, secondly, so, so what they've done is they, they have employed a different root word that doesn't, that has not, nothing, that has no bearing on this particular root word. So the root word that they have employed, now watch this. The root word they have employed is Yameen. So you have Iman and you have Yameen, okay. two different root words. So Iman, its root word was Alif, Mim, Nun, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now Yameen, which they have done over here, we're going to go to 4, 24. I think it's 24, 25 to touch on some of the topics in terms of misogyny. Yeah, slavery, yeah, yeah, about, yeah. Right? all of that. Now, now watch, watch this now, yeah? Now watch this. Here, you have the same word, Aymanakum, yeah. but watch what they've done. Your right hands possess, right? But look, they put a, they put a slash and they wrote what? Oaths. Mm -hmm. so, so now they've given, so they know they're mucking about. Is it your right hands possess or is it oaths? Which is it? So let's say you were translating it the other direction mm -hmm. and you wanted the word for your right hands or for oaths. Yeah. What, what should the word be? In that, the the in word that can be oaths. The word can be oath because oath, faith, security, all of that it goes back into that synonym, synonym of amen. But it but cannot be right. right. Huh? Also, oh yeah, the right, the right part. Okay. Yeah. But what? It, okay, but what it's is it is it saying it's literally the right hand, or is it saying the is, translation is the right, is right hand, hand. Mm. or is the right hand a, an analogy for something? The okay. right hand possesses. It, it could be, but it, it's not saying your left hand. So why is it specifically saying the right hand? That's a good question. But, but, but the bigger issue here is, what's your right hand got to do with this word? So what, what I'm saying is mm. maybe the phrase, the right hand, mm. or possessed by the right hand, mm -hmm. has some other connotation that we're not, that we're not understanding no, I understand. in the English. I understand. But the issue that we still have is why go, why go away from the simple translation of the word? Why, why give us uh, an interpretation and, let, and a meaning? I mean, this is a, it's a bit of a what if, but mm. let's say if we discovered that the word that the phrase that which your right hand possesses mm -hmm. also means to confine. 
mm -hmm. then we'd find that actually it does correlate with the previous definition that you gave, right? In in uh, chapter two. What well, Aman with the security and that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I think one of the words I saw there was also to confine to confine, or, or one of the words was. Was we can, we can, we can related go, to confinement. We can, we can go back there. We can go back there and see that. But another thing I wanted to do is I, 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 I press the imanakum now. Yeah. And look at the look at the difference. Now we have a different. The early one was alif mim nun. Right. Now we have ya mim nun. Yeah. Yamin. So we have a completely different root word. Right. Now even if we look at this particular root word. It's interesting. I'm, I'm learning something about Arabic. Yeah, fine, fine. E even we look at the, th that's what I want to do today. Mm. Even if we look at this particular root word, we will see that it is not consistent. Here it is translated as your oaths. In your oaths. In your oaths. Look, li a manukum. So every time it's a manukum, it's translated as oaths. Watch this. What does, watch. That, um, what does that mean in this in this context? In what a manukum? So for something to be in your oath or in your oath. As in a, a promise that you made, a covenant, oh, okay. a, 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 a deal that you made. Right. You see what I'm saying to you? Right. But but the issue I have here is that every time you have a manukum, every time you have anything that is similar to iman. Then they translate it as oaf, oaf, oaf. Watch this. Right. Oaf. Watch this. This one, your right hand possessed, but they still put oafs, and then they put a, they put their own meaning yeah, here. Yeah. Watch this. Your right hand, but they still put oafs because they know they can't just say that. Again, same thing. But when it's actually your right, when it's actually the right, watch how different it is. Mm. Now I'm going to go to the straight right. This is what, this is what I meant when I said mm. how do you, if you were to translate the English to Arabic. Yeah. When you want to say your right hand, what should it sound like? There, right, 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 right. Now, when it's actually the right, not just oath, yeah? When mm -hmm. it's actually the right, where have you got? Yamin. Mm. See that? I'm going to go to again. In his right hand, be Yaminihi. The right, Yamin. The right, Yamin. In your right hand, be Yaminaka. Yamin. See? A man home again. Mm. Oath comes up. You see that? Mm. You see? But when it's the right, it's and you're just saying this simple. Right, this right be Yaminaka. Yamin and Iman are two different, is what I'm saying. Mm. When so they, you're saying imanukum is not has nothing to do with right. The right. right. Yeah. Yamin is right. Mm. And, and even in the Quran itself, you will see that consistently Yamin is translated as right. However, when they have imanukum, mm. they put right and then they put a slash and they say oh, because they know they're mucking about. Why would you? Which one is it? Mm. You see what I'm saying to you? That's one of Can argument. we pinpoint where, where that's come from? In, in, in yes, we can. Yes, we can. Where that's come but from why is very that simple. Happened? Okay, very simple. The reason it's happened is because the Quran has been translated by the people who have propagated the hadiths. Right. So what they wanted to do is obviously make sure that the Quran is in line with the narrative that they have in the hadiths. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're saying that there's a conflict. There is a conflict. There's yeah. a huge conflict because uh, there's a huge conflict because be a Quranist. Well, there you go. <laughs> because hadiths came. Let's deal with the facts. Fact of the matter is that the hadiths came. A, a century plus after the Prophet's death. This is a fact, this is not something that I claim, yeah. this is something that is known and is claimed by all of them. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So the idea that they can retranslate the Quran 150 years later and, 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 and make sure that the Quran goes in line with their narrative 150 years later is for the birds. And the thing is it's not even it's not even a manipulation of the opportunity. It's not an, an exploitation of the opportunity that arises from having texts that did not include diacritical markings and then marking it kind of as you as you wanted to. Mm. They've actually changed the root words. Yeah, that bad, mm. that bad. Now it gets worse. It gets worse. Um, another thing, what we're gonna do? Another another thing we can do is obviously they perp they they perp they. Uh, perpetuated this idea that you cannot understand the Quran without the hadith. So now a lot of people have narratives from the hadith and then they associate that with the Quran automatically, assuming that it is there. So for, so let's say for argument's sake, let's say for argument's sake, that it did say your right hands possess. For argument's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Quran and we're going to look at all of the, all of the players in the Quran. Because all of the... The entire story of the Quran, or in terms of the Prophet receiving the Quran, the Prophet uh, preaching the Quran, and the Prophet being persecuted for preaching the Quran, and the Prophet having to fight battles and stuff, the Prophet dealing with hypocrites, the Prophet having contracts with the people of the book, Christians and Jews, all of that is in the Quran. And, and, the, pe and the people who, who are refugees, the, support, uh, the, the, support, the, the people who are war captives, all of that is in the Quran. What we need to do then is we need to find 
who could fit this this uh, this idea of right hands possess from the Quran itself. So with that being said, I'll give you an example. What we can do, if, if you don't mind. Yes. So before we move on, yeah. can we take the um, the verse that we just looked at, mm -hmm. and then maybe you read, try to provide a translation that you feel is appropriate for the Arabic. That's the point. In order to, I want to do come at it from two point angles, if I may. Yeah. One, one. I want you to notice this. You see this thing that they put in uh, um, brackets: mm -hmm. women who flee, disbelieving husbands seeking asylum. Right. Yeah. They're actually correct in this. Now I'm gonna do sixty ten. Oh, those who believe. When it comes to you, the believing women, as immigrants, seeking, then test them. God is fully aware of their faith. And if you know them to be believing women, do not return them to the disbelievers. Nor are they lawful for them, and not they are lawful for them. Yeah. But give them what they have spent, and not any blame upon you if you marry them, when, when you have given them their dowries. And do not remain... Do not and do not you remain to marital bonds with disbelievers wish if they wish to join the enemy but ask for what you have spent and let them ask for what they have spent that is the judgment of god he judges between you and god is omniscient the question here is i'm going to cover every single angle i'm not going to i'm not going to insist that this is malakat aymanukum i'm not going to insist that what i'm going to ask is that someone tell me who those people are if they cannot be Malakat Aymanakum, what would you what title would you give them? Why 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 is there no mention of this particular group of people? Because logically speaking, what is this verse telling us? This verse is telling us that there are women who basically heard the message. Their, their, husband, their, their husband has remained pagans, mm. but they've chosen, you know what, I've bought this message. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And, and, the, and, the and Muslims, they fled from their non-believing husbands. And they husbands. fled from their non-believing husbands. Right. And, the, and the Muslims have to set, send them their money back. Imagine that. The, 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 the pagans, obviously, they spent money to marry these women. Mm. So the Muslims are to reimburse them mm. and pay these women dowry if they want to marry them. You read that yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and on, on, the, on the flip side, the Muslims are told, look, if you are married to uh, women who are disbelievers and they want to join them, send them. So it goes both ways. It's right. like exchange. And they pay you. And, and well, they're pagans, so they don't have they don't have that rule. Right. <laughs> Do you get it? Right, right. Do you get? Let's be honest. Right. Like, would, but it says well, it, it did say uh, you and you. What was it? Something, you, you tell them what you've what you have spent. But you that's ask for the for, women. But ask you all for what, what you, you have, have spent. spent. That's the women, though. Look, uh -huh. look. And do not remain to marital bonds with disbelievers if they wish to join oh, the enemy. But ask for what you have spent. Right, right, and right. Let them on, on the women you've married, you the are not women, believers. yeah, because I didn't. We, we married on certain conditions. You, right. Who broke the conditions? You did, right? right. You want to go and join my enemies? Right. Give my money back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds fair. It sounds fair. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah? So to cut the long story short, um, I'm not going to insist that this is who Malakat Aymanukum is, right. but I'm going to I'm going to offer it to those that claim that Malakat Aymanukum is specifically slaves or whatever. The I'm simply going to ask by them. The right hand. Yeah. As a, as an alternative. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to ask them what, what would you class these people as? Right, right. If they are not possessed possessed by the right hand. So do you find there in this wording and the opportunity to to maybe put in the the oaths? Um, Translation, because um, um, amongst that one with the right, uh, well, the yeah. right hand, there was the oaths. Well, yeah. Well, is this an oath? Very simple, because this is a commandment from God. Right. I, don't, I didn't see an oath. In there. Okay. All those who believe, mm. when the, when comes to you the believing women, do we have a commandment or not? Yeah. yeah it's a commandment, right? Yeah, yeah. And what and what is the what's the deal between you and between you and God? Let's say you're Muslim. A covenant. So there's an oath between you yeah. two. So you, when God tells you to do a specific thing, you have yeah. a very specific thing. That's an oath. Right. I see that. I was just saying that. It's, it's, I'll set it up for you. Yeah, no, 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 thank you. Thank you. No, I want that. I want that. Thank you. So going back to now 424, 
Again, and, and more angles now. Yeah. More angles. Um, only because 4, 424, 425, whatever it is, yeah. that's, that's a verse of much uh, Controversy. contention. Yeah. Uh, this is what I mean. That's one that uh, a lot of people will, will, will use. Will throw, throw at Muslims. I know, which is why I'm trying to deal with it once and for all. Now, go back to uh, 424. Now, remember earlier on where we said about the, 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 the women, what were they? The, the, the one that fleed, they Believers. were married, right? Ma no. uh, yeah. They were married. married. Right. Now watch this. And prohibited are the women who are married of women, except whom possessed your right hands. Do you see the connection now? Who possess your right hand. Yeah. As married and prohibited are the women who are already married of the women, except, except unless whom possessed your right hand. Bro, what's that verse so, who, so who's the group Four. of people? So oh, who's the group? So who's the group of people? So who's the group of people that may already be married, who you can, who you can acquire? Right. What did what did sixty ten tell us about about women who are the already married? Women who are married to non-believers. Uh, yeah, yeah, believers who are married to non-believers. They yeah. were, they were, what were they? They were married. Mm -hmm. And in order to marry them, what did God tell us to do? Pay back the pagans. Mm -hmm. And, and, and pay the women dowry. Mm -hmm. So these we can marry. Mm -hmm. That's the only exception we've got. So they need to provide us what other women were married, except the one that we that, except the one that we already know about. So when it says, um, mm. unless whom possessed your right hand, yes. what does that mean? Well, I told you, well, right oh, hand you're, is You're the, substituting that for the... Right hand is the problem here. Yeah. That, that <laughs> yeah. term is the problem. Yeah. But this is why I'm saying maybe right hand, maybe in some old English it means something else. I know, but the problem is in well in English maybe well fine in in old English maybe, but if we deal with the Arabic, it's something. To I think do people with are it taking hold. it literally like it's people are taking it literally like you're, you're, something that you hold. Something that you hold. But there must be there must but be a reason why it's the right hand. Well, yeah, I know, but the problem is we're trying to deal with this with this contention here because yeah. when you say right hand, people are thinking a slave. They don't they they really don't know how else to think. Because there's, right um, hand. there's, there's like a verse in the, in the book of Isaiah which says God took uh, Cyrus by the right hand. Yeah. So I'm just trying to see if there's a connection. But what does that? I know, but I, I don't. I, can't, I have no knowledge about that. But um, this particular now again, the other problem with calling these slaves, the other problem with calling these slaves is uh, I can't remember the exact verse. Isa, do me a favor, bro. Can you pull up the verse where where where, where God talks about? Um, uh, seeking permission to marry the, the woman that your right hand possess. That's another problem. If someone is a slave, how are you going to seek permission from their, from their family to marry them? Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, that's, not, that's not in this. Uh, that's not in this. He, he's going to pull it out for us. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying to you? That's another contention. Mm. Another contention is you have to pay these women dowry. Who pays a slave dowry, let alone, so you're going to go and ask This extract where you say it says uh, asking permission to yeah. marry the, the slave. No, the right hand. The right hand, all right, right. Literally. Is, that, is, that, is it using the same word? Uh, it's using the same word, yeah. Oh. yeah. All of it using the same word. So we're going to pull that out as well. So we're going to have to deal with this idea that, you know, you, go, you, go, you, you have a slave, you want to marry. The, imagine marrying a slave, asking permission to marry a slave and paying that slave dowry. When on earth has that ever happened? That, that literally destroys the very definition of a slave. Pay Who dowry. Who are suggesting you ask permission from? Her family. Yeah, because I think, I mean, just looking at, sorry, just looking at it from the other side, mm. maybe it's um, what you're doing in that process is making a... You're, you're emancipating a slave, so she's no longer a slave once the once the process of marriage like umbrella, starts. Marine done. Marine, yeah, you talk about uh. this, sir, yeah? Yeah. And if you, what, you about, and if you fear that, that you're not justly with the orphan girls, then marry those then. No, 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 another one. The, uh, this one literally says permission. Literally, that's another one. Literally says permission. Yeah, go on. So, so again, playing devil's advocate. Yes, yes, the emancipation. You're, so what I'm saying is once that process of emancipation starts, you're taking them out of slavery. So maybe that's where the... Yeah, but why would I want to emancipate them? If someone, if, if Islam promotes slavery, if this is what the Quran is telling me to do, why do I want to emancipate them? Um, I mean, yeah, some people make that claim, mm. but we, are you denying that they were slaves? If I go by the Quran, 
There is nothing in the Quran itself that suggests any slaves of any kind. Unless, unless, unless so I understand we say, you reject uh, the hadith in terms of your faith, mm. but I'm saying there were his, there were. I deny it completely. But there were things going on there that are not that are not recorded in, in the Quran, right? Yes, but I cannot talk about that at all. I can only deal with what's in the Quran. If anyone wants to talk about anything that's outside of the Quran, it's for other people to defend it. So if it's talking, but I'm about, talking about the Quran of itself. A, oh, so if, it's talk, if the Quran specifically talks about people of a time, uh -huh. you're saying that what was going on peripherally in their lives is irrelevant. No, what was going on in the periphery, uh, what was going on um, in their lives, I do not know. I can, I can only go about what's in the Quran. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Because if we talk about history... So you're saying that it, it doesn't mention slavery? It doesn't mention in any, slavery in any respect. In any respect. Okay. If, you, if you apply the rules that you've discussed to the, to the words that are actually there. Yes. Now, um, uh, so what have we got? We've got the linguistic definition. We've got 60-10. Uh, talking about uh, the women who left their pagan husbands and joined, and joined the Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's, so we've got that group of people. Another group of people we've got is captives, war captives. Mm -hmm. War captives are not slaves, they are war captives. War captives, the alternative to war captives is murder. So I don't see why anyone would argue against war captives. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Um, so again, war captives is not slavery. Um, another, another word that is used in the Quran that constantly people want to say refers to slaves is Abd and another one is Fatayakum. However, in the Quran itself, it is also translated as servant. Now, people say that servant is slave. Now, watch this. My guy. My guy. And whoever among you cannot find the means to marry free believing women, free, it's not in the Arabic, uh, then from those whom your right hand possess of believing slave girls. And Allah is most knowing about your faith. Alright, so we can, we can apply the same formula to this and look at the Arabic mm -hmm. and look at the, the root so do words. You that, do you want yeah. to bring that on your. We'll do that, we'll do that. Let's just read it first. Sure. Arabic's above, by the way. So you can just yeah, but I think on, yeah. the, on his app, I've got an app where you can go into the root words. Yeah. Um, and whoever among you cannot find the means to tell me what what um, the app is. Yeah. Cool. So, and whoever among you cannot ma find the means to marry free believing women, then marry from those your right hand possess. Now here's the here's the interesting part. Look at the translation alone. From those your right hand possess of believing slave girls. I thought right hand possess me meant slave girls. How do you have two? Right hand possessed means slave, slaves. This is why, this is why I'm and, and slave that girls mean slaves. There's something else behind, behind right the, hand. No, the translation is a joke. Look, look, how do yeah. you, you're telling me right hand possesses a slave and then believing it's slave like you're girls. you're saying slave twice. Slave twice. That doesn't follow. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying to you? Yeah? Now, and where it gets worse in the, in, in the context is that uh, and Allah is most knowing about your faith. You believers are of one another. So marry them with the permission of their people and give them their due compensation according to what is acceptable. What's that good? How do you treat a slave? Again, like I'll that? play devil's advocate again. Go for so it. So in this, in respect of asking which, for permission. Which verse is this? 425. 425, I'll put it up. Thank you, bro. In, in, in respect of asking permission to marry a slave. Yeah. What I'm saying is, mm -hmm. even if someone's a slave, mm -hmm. it doesn't imply that the slave owner can, has free reign to treat them any way, any way they want. So, Doesn't it? Well, we could. I'm, I'm just oh, no, making no, I'm the just assumption on, yeah. that maybe they had some sort of work, workers' rights, so to speak. And that but then the you, word slave would apply. Well, not in the sense in the sense that they weren't necessarily getting paid, mm -hmm. but that you had to, for example, keep up the morale so that they. You to avoid re rebellion or uh -huh. having, know, having to mete out punishment and so on. Like I know, but there the must word, have been to, to kind of incentivize it somehow. I hear you, but the word slave has, has connotations we cannot ignore. Right. The idea that slave has rights, the idea that you give a slave dowry, the Again, idea that so you marry that a slave. As opposed to mm. impose on the slave on the slave owner, so to speak. So as in it's not in your benefit mm. just to whip whip them to death on a daily basis. What you want to do is make them feel like if they if they do what they're supposed to do, they'll be treated with respect. So this could have been an extension of that respect, so to speak, to ask permission of the 
fellow slaves or the slave's family if they were also slaves. I know, but let's say, let's say, let's say, I'm, let's say, I'm, okay, let's say I'm a slave in, um, in, um, during the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. Now, if you was to tell me this, this particular, this particular uh, 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 slavery idea where someone has rights and you know you marry them and blah blah blah. Would I see that as slavery? So what I mean is you have whatever rights your slave owner extends to you. So mm. it, it may be a facade, mm. but it will be to, to avoid conflict or avoid rebellion, so to speak. So your slave owner may see you as property, mm. but he'll, he'll treat you with kindness so that, to keep your morale up, to keep you uh, motivated in your, in your work, so to speak. Because it's not, the word slave doesn't imply that they would that they were mistreated per Doesn't se it? on a day, as in on a daily basis. I mean, the whole the whole yeah. idea of slavery is mistreatment. But I mean, okay, but within, within mm. that context, on a daily basis, mm. I'm sure some slaves were treated differently to others. Okay, but here, you you said slavery has the connotation of mistreatment. I'm saying it can have. So what what I'm saying is, we shouldn't assume necessarily that the opinions or the thoughts of the slaves were completely ignored. Okay, you know what? Let, let's deal with one thing. Let's deal with one thing. Does a slave get paid? No. Okay, let's do it. Nor with do that. they have a choice. Nor do they have a choice, right? To okay, perform let's do their, their duty, yes. okay. I would assume. Alright, let's deal with that. Okay. 1735. 1735. <laughs> You would, you would assume not. Yeah. <laughs> you huh? would assume that a slave is not getting paid. Well, I mean, if it's I mean, <laughs> if you're getting paid, you're not a slave. Earning privileges, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Could now, be, could now be an watch exception, this. Right? Okay. Now tell me this. Huh? Some people doing nine to five might disagree. Bro. You got a point. I, I'm, I'm, I disagree. <laughs> I'm already there. I disagree. Watch this, yeah. 1735. What we cannot have, we cannot. The Quran cannot contradict itself. If it contradicts itself, it's not from God. Now watch this, yeah. And give full that's measure. Enough, okay, fine. <laughs> and, and, and give full measure when you measure. What's this? And give full measure when you measure, and weigh with balance the straight. That is good and best determination. Now, please tell me how you can give full measure when you measure, and weigh with balance, and and and, and basically have a slave where you don't pay them. Well, what's the context for this? Okay, we can look at it. Well. I don't know why this is. As in, what's this? What's this talking about? What's the, set the, this set is talking about set trade. The scene. When, and give full measure. This is trade. And give full measure when you measure, and and weigh with balance. This is trade. Okay. Because when we're trading, when we're trading, I can't cheat you. Okay. So, with a, with a, with a supposed slave or with with someone that is employed by you, there is a trade. You pay them. They provide you a service. So if they provide you a service and you don't pay them. Right. If they provide you a service and you don't pay them, you have not given them so full what about, measure. So what about this? I will pay you. Huh? I will pay you this for your job. Like imagine, imagine as a so-called slave owner, someone agrees. I will pay you for your job. Mm -hmm. I will pay you fairly, mm -hmm. but you have no choice but to do the job. Um, Is that slavery? You'll pay me fairly, but I have no I'll choice. I'll give you a fair to... wage, mm -hmm. but you have no. You don't have the option to quit. Okay. What we're gonna do is. You see, you, okay. you no, see no, no. fine. What we're gonna do? As long as we accept that the, the payment part, yeah. what we're gonna do is we're gonna substantiate the latter part. Do you see what I'm saying? So if we accept the payment part, now we're gonna do. Now we're gonna try find in the Quran some substantiation that one could be forced against their will to work. We can't just assume it. We have to find it in the Quran. Fair? Um. Not necessarily. I mean, we can apply what we know historically we about, the, about the era, right? I know. I, we can't do that, though, because we're not can in I, agreement of what was going on. Can I volunteer a verse? Go yeah. for it. That instead of using my Malekat instead of using my Malekat it says Abd and Amma. Yeah? Mm. I think you, so touched on, in, you touched on that, right? I touched on that. I was oh, going to go into that next, right. yeah. So, so it's definitely said when it talks about not... not we didn't go into it in, in detail, right. but if you have a, a verse that we can, we yeah. can examine it. So, I wanted to first get rid so of Malakat and Malakum, no, no. then go to Abd and, and okay. Fatayakum. But go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, Fatayakum was in that verse that you, the last one, 425, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, but let me just Google up the verse. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any suggestion on what, what, why this phrase, the right hand possesses, keeps coming up? 
look, for, I've got my, for I've, Imana Kum. I don't, I don't want to hijack uh, Ahmed's uh, conversation here. I, I've got my view on what it is. Um, <laughs> So it's Bakara uh, 221 it starts. I'll just get it up. Put um two. Another one I also wanted to deal with, you know the word um, servant? Yeah. The word abd or fatayakum some sometimes is translated as servant, sometimes mm -hmm. it's translated as slave. Mm -hmm. Now the issue is this. If we go to 4332, the Quran specifically talks about employment. So what I want is simply for those that say that uh, the word is definitely a slave, I want them to tell me what, what you would call someone that is employed because the Quran talks about employing people. Here's an example. Do they distribute the mercy of your Lord? We distribute them among their necessity of their of of, of life shares in the in the life of the world, and we raised some of them above above some others in ranks, so that they may take some of them, some others in service. But the mercy of your Lord is better than that which so they it, accumulate. Who's the first them? So it says we took. Was it we took some of them? Basically, some are, some are richer than others. Yeah. So that so that so that they can. Use each what other for service. So what that tells me is, mm. if, if we're looking at it in the context of slavery, okay. if we're just assuming that because, are we saying that there are mis? Are you saying that there are misconceptions about this verse? No, I'm not saying that. Slavery. They, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm saying this, no one says that this verse has anything to do with slavery. Okay. What I'm saying is this verse clearly talks about some people are richer than others, so that those can employ the so that those can yeah. employ uh, the, the people that are not rich, so they can right. use each other. Obviously, if you're rich, you're going to need someone to work for you. If, I, if I'm not rich, well, I'm going to need... It says raise them... Above others, as in, as in work. In as status. In, no, money. Yeah. Where they, the, where's the money part? Well, it's... It, okay, do they... you're reading that, you're... I'll tell you where the money part is. Yeah, that's what I want to know where that is. Do well. they distribute, distribute first and foremost, the mercy of your Lord? We distribute them among them, their necessities of life. So, do they distribute... No, uh, we is God. No, do they distribute... Yeah, it says yeah. they, right? Do they distribute the mercy of your Lord? Lord? Yeah. Which means, do That's they rhetorical. share? Is it, is it saying, do they, do they think share their message? Or do no, they, no. Do, they, do they distribute, as in, do they think that they decide who is, who's got oh, some, oh, so who's got wealth and who doesn't, in other words? Do they right. distribute the mercy of your Lord? We distribute among them their necessities of life. Necessities right, 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 of right. life. As in, do they think that they are, that they decide. Responsible for for the well-being of, exactly. of these people. For, for wealth, basically. We are. We are. Right, we, are right. we decide who gets right, what. Right. Just among them, their necessities of life. In the life of the world. And we raised some of them above some others in ranks. Yeah. So that they may take some of them, some others in service. So it's saying... And here's, so here's the money God raised part. some people up to take others into their service. Yeah. Right. The We're all employed. The class system. The class system, literally. Right. The class system. But the mercy of your Lord is better than that which they accumulate. So everything in this verse indicates money. Could be power. Service. Then you're going to have to deal with the service part. Well, those you know, of lower status could be in service to those higher in power, right? Not ne it's not necessarily about economics. Okay, but why would I be? Why would one choose to be in service to them? Because there's nothing in here that that that, that, that indicates there's anything to do with force. Like a governor and a and his Subject. secretary, let's say. Yeah, but a secretary chooses to become a secretary. Like for example, you not you, when you go to work, you go there because it's in your benefit. Just like it's in the benefit of the person employing you to employ you. It's a deal. Mm -hmm. It's a contract. Mm -hmm. And that's what this verse seems to imply. So the question here, the question I have, is. What do you call those that are employed? If you insist that the word fatayakun means or, or abd means slave and not uh, and not a servant, and, what, and, and if you insist that servant means slave, what do you call someone that's employed? Because the word employed doesn't have a, a an Arabic word, especially at that particular time. So if you're employed, you're a servant. 
What's the difference? I think that can be read in a few different ways, but I, I, see, okay. how, I see how you're reading it. Okay. Uh, what else? So we have linguistic. We've checked 6010. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me drop a little span on that. Go on. There's a, there's a verse in Surah Al-Qasas where um, the two sons of, the two daughters in fact, of I believe the high priest of Midian come to water their, their, their sheep. And the eldest one tries to come forward and she can't because there's men. So Moses does it for her. Oh, she asked him to employ him. Right. Continue. Yeah. The word, she says, she says, Ya abatis statjir. So istijar would be what you use the term for employment. Okay. Um, the verse that I wanted to read says, Wala tunkihul mushrikati hatta yu'min. Do not, do not marry the polytheist women up until they believe. Wala amatun mu'minatun khayrun min mushrika walau a'jabatkum. And the believing slave girl is better than the polytheist one, no matter how much they may amaze you. Wala tunkihul mushrikina hatta What's the Arabic for slave girl? Ama. Okay. وَلَا تُنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا وَلَا عَبَدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ مُشْرِكٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ And do not, put, do, not, uh, do not get married by the polytheistic man um, and a believing slave is better than polytheistic man no matter how much they may amaze you those are those who call to the fire but the, the, the words are... Can I just interrupt you? Yeah, go on. Um, Emma yeah. is also in another verse comes up as imma'ikum. Imma'ikum, that would be, uh, would be plural. So it's the same one, right? Yeah, imma'ikum. I looked into the root word yeah. and apparently it means a maid. So we have to make a difference between a maid and a slave because maids exist till, the, till today. Yeah. Um, and they exist everywhere. Is it possible that a maid can also be a slave though or the two terms can be uh, interchangeable? Well, linguistically what we have is a maid. So what do we do with that? Okay, Emma could be maid. Mm -hmm. Abd, mm -hmm. I've not seen Abd ever used except in circumstances where it's been an uh, or Ibad, yeah, the servants of Allah. Or I have Abd no problem Allah. with servant. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, I think maybe mm -hmm. the, because of the connotation of the word slavery, mm -hmm. you might want to shy away from it. Um, shy away is a strong word. You know, so the word maid, is it um, maid as in like young woman, like maiden, or is it maid as in a female servant? Made as in a worker, yeah, a worker, a home worker. Okay, a home worker. We have that till today, so I don't see any problem with a maid. Mm -hmm. So, so, okay, in terms of differing from servant to slave, uh -huh. what's your like, what's your view on that? Like, what makes a slave in a better position than a uh, what makes a servant in a better position than a slave? Because to me, a servant is synonymous to someone that's employed. Okay. Anyone employed is a servant. Okay. Um, so. So the, okay, right. So that would mean then, with the ab, with the advent of the Messenger of Allah, Muslims would have had to get rid of all their servants or slaves because we, we we know pre-Islamically we know the situation in Arabia. People had slaves. I don't know that. You Historic, may, I don't historically know. speaking, we have the trade. We have the trade. But you have to be careful with, the, with your position as a Quranist. Yeah? yeah, but the as a Quranist, you cannot say. Mm -hmm. um, if, if Historical look, evidence is irrelevant unless it's no, in the I, I can't, No, I can't. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because if we go by his, 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 what we know by history, what we know by history is basically the Arabs did not have anything special economically in their region. As a matter of fact, the Sassanids and the, and the Romans neither even bothered with them because they yeah. didn't find it. They didn't find it worth. I've looked at all the historical maps. Yeah. They didn't find it like worth their while. Persian or yeah. Sasanians. Yeah. Um, Byzantines and then the Arabian Peninsula is just pretty much left. <laughs> Hence, my, just left on exactly. its own, yeah. so, so when we look at that, when we look at that, I find it hard to fathom that they could potentially have slaves, because slaves are for like, are, are for like uh, massive productions. You want them to for agriculture, for trade, for for. For economic purposes, if you're in the desert and no one even finds it worth their while to even join you, to even conquer you, what, what do they have? What, 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 so what's the purpose of a slave there? So then that would imply that they were desolate. So when you're reading verses about having money over someone, that would also apply. They wouldn't have any money because there's nothing there. 
there's nothing worth living. They'd be desolate people with, with no needs for gold. So how would you reconcile that with the Quran? I'm not really sure I understood you. I'm saying the verse you read about people employing other people. Yeah. The point you just made subsequent yeah. to that is that there was nothing there, so no one touched them. No one wanted to fight them or anything because it wasn't worth their while, yeah. right? Yeah. In my eyes, not being worth the while traversing the desert mm. yeah, or traversing hard terrain yeah. to get to a place doesn't necessitate they don't have anything there. But in your consideration, if, you're, if, if that's how you feel, yeah. why would Allah address the people in regards to wealth? They wouldn't have any. They would be desolate people who live off the land. Wealth doesn't or have... Who, who live off a, of a, des a desert, desertus. Barter. Wealth doesn't have to mean uh, gold. Or, or, what, or what we call money well, today. Camels. You see what I'm saying time, to you? Right? Wealth is simply if I have more things than you we, and, and you require some of my things, we would do something called bartering. It was the size right. of your caravan, would I suppose, trade? at that time. I'm saying, how yeah, would we you, would trade, so it's not necessary. How, how would you acquire that if you had no means? But I think it's a bit of a leap to say that because the Byzantines no, no. or the, or the uh, uh, Sassanids mm. didn't make a concerted effort to occupy those lands that there was nothing in those lands there was nothing going on there or there was no and then making the next jump to there was no slavery there like why, well, why well, would you why well, would you make that assumption because because historically and, and to this day we find that if obviously um, if, if if an empire or if any if any land or whatever has anything worth their well they'll get they'll get um, and actually, the claim that you make—they'll get they invaded. Those there, there's people, no reason. Even then, it's not really true because I, I know at some point the Byzantines used uh, some of the, the tribes, list. some of the tribes yeah. in the northern mm. part of the peninsula yeah, part as a buffer like zone. Like yeah, we could go on all night. Or or consolidate it, yeah. Okay, you know what? Okay, so since I've got very little time, let me deal with the inheritance one quickly. Yeah, go for it. Let me deal I with the inheritance one. You. Okay, cool. Can you pull up four eleven? Okay, inheritance again that people have been going on about a lot. It's number four. <laughs> 411, 412. Hey, your brother's falling into that category still. Nah, nah, not, not, oh, not, not, not Veli himself. <laughs> not Veli himself. Uh, 411, 412 and 4176. The three verses that talks about inheritance. And um, the supposed, the, uh. su the supposed error, the supposed error is uh, what they do is they change waladun to awlad whereas in the quran it talks about what you leave your spouse in 412 for example it talks about okay 411 starts with if you have multiple children or no children and on both occasions they yeah, go to 411. oh yeah sorry boy hello a line such concerning your children yeah so check this out yeah once you get there. All right. 411 talks about children. So if we look at Arabic, what have we got? Oulad. I'm, I'm interested to hear your, your explanation for this. Cool. 411, it talks about children. And in the Arabic, we have Oladikum. Oladikum is plural. In the English, it says children, that is plural. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So well, the Quran talks about plural children or no children. So it talks about two, 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 two separate occasions. So if you have plural children, or if you have no children, what you, um, what you leave your parents? What you leave your relatives? What, it, first it talks about, the, the first one talks about... Well, you're talking, we're talking about misconceptions here, yeah? Yeah, we're talking so, about So let's read what the, the English, okay. so we can, we okay. can okay. identify the misconception okay. and then you can no address problem. it. Allah instructs you concerning your children. For the male what is equal to the share of two males. But if there are daughters... Two females. Yeah, two females. Yeah. But if there are daughters basically double what, 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 what she gets but if there are daughters two or more still talking about plural yeah for them is two-thirds of one's estate and if there is only one for her is half this is one daughter doesn't mean the son is still there for her is half and for one's parents so now one's parents to each one of them is a sixth of his estate if he left children but if he had no children and the parents alone inherit from him then for his mother is one third the mother gets more. And if, and if he had brothers or sisters, for his mother is a sixth. After any bequest, maid or debt, your parents or your children, you know not which of them are nearest to you in benefit. Why did you say the parents, why did you say the mother gets more? Because it says, um, it says um, if he has no child, yes. 
and only his two parents inherit him, mm -hmm. then his mother shall have a third. A third. The father still gets a sixth. But he, why? Huh? Well, where does the rest go? Uh, he says if, if there are no children, so if it's only your parents, so you, the mother gets a third and the father gets the other two. No, 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 no. no. no, no. You're, 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 you're thinking of it as a default thing. So it's she not gets a third and then he gets what's left over. Nah, it doesn't work like that. Okay. He may have bequeathed whatever amount of his wealth to other people. They say that's, I the, see, that's I see. the obligatory Very. amount of wealth. Oh, I see, I see. So, awesome. it, so the father's not even accounted for. He's no. not even accounted for. Okay, I understand. That's my mistake. Um, so your parents or your children, you know not which of them are nearest to you in benefit. These no, hold are on, I'm sorry. I'm going to correct myself again. So it says his two parents inherit him. Uh, yeah, yeah, then his mother yeah. shall have the third. Yeah, yeah. he gets so, a sixth. Because earlier on, okay. listen, listen, here, look. And for one's parents, to each one of them is a sixth okay. of his estate if he left children. But if he, but, if he, but if he had no children and the parents alone inherit from him, then the mother is one third. The father hasn't changed. Okay. Did you get it? The, yeah. mother, the mother's status has changed. I don't even think there's any mention of the father in No, but the father Done. was... Huh? 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Fuck it, oh. All We're right, going to so have to continue part this. Part two, yeah, part two. To, ah. to cut the long story short, 412, which they constantly bring up, does not use Olad. He uses Waladun, and that's referring to one child. So what they do is they bring up examples where, where they talk about multiple children, and then they say, ah, oh, you have to leave the spouse something, and if you leave the spouse something, there won't be, it'll basically go over the 100%, Excellent. which it doesn't. Please. Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. Listen! Yeah, yeah. So, um, I got a person who can actually give us a little bit more insight about the coronavirus because you have participated in the uh, protests in uh, Hong Kong. Yes, correct? I do. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, you know, she knows uh, some things that people might not realize about the coronavirus nowadays. And there, there's actually, it's actually a possible theory of what might be going on in China because a lot of information isn't being leaked uh, in the West. You know. uh, would you like to say anything about the coronavirus? What's going on? There? I'm sure. How oh, it originated? Uh, yeah. So, wow. What should, where should I, I, I start to say? Um, I think. <laughs> I, I, I may we get a trouble from China, <laughs> but but it's okay. I mean, you can... I mean, don't don't say anything if you don't feel like uh, you know no, no, it's gonna be safe. For you. I, I, it's you best know, to I just I just say what um what 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 was my 